What's going on guys? It's Samantha from Lone Crow Adventures, the channel where we talk about all things camping, hiking, and backpacking. This weekend we're back on the Ice Age Trail. We're going to be completing three segments. We're starting in Verona, then we're headed to the Montreux segment, and we're going to wrap up with the Brooklyn Wildlife segment. It's going to be a great weekend. Thanks for coming along with us. Let's go! morning y'all uh, we have woken up and this DCA is literally so close to the parking lot that we're gonna pack up and there's a pavilion actually I think you can actually see the roof of the pavilion right there behind that pine tree we're gonna walk over there and that's where we're gonna have our breakfast because the DCA is literally so close to everything so Still got my sleeping stocking cap on. The moon was very bright last night, so I had to take this and pull it down over my eyes as just a little light shield because it was a full moon last night. And this is the pavilion. Sarah's got her spoon. It's a pretty big, pretty big pavilion. So what's for breakfast, do you ask? We have some apples and cinnamon, oatmeal, blueberries and cream. And then I have some extra fruit to add to it. And then I have some breakfast essentials to add to my nasty instant coffee because you guys all know how much I love instant coffee. So that's what's on the menu this morning. The Ice Age Trail access. Right off of the little parking lot at the Ice Age Trail Junction. Little blue blaze way up here. Well, we've had our breakfast. We're all packed up. We are ready to rock and roll. We're gonna get the opportunity to walk through a lot of prairie grasslands, which is always nice. Can't be woods all the time, but there's lots of other parts of nature that are just as enjoyable, which is nice because the temperature today is more reasonable than it's been the last three times that we've been out on trail. So thankfully, we're not gonna be dealing with 95 plus degrees like we have been on the past couple of trips so really enjoying it it's an echinacea and we have some brown eyed species our first little wooded section here this portion of the trail is pretty busy so far we've seen three other hikers day hikers and we've seen a trail runner and two dogs. So, oh, mosquitoes are bad though. They're getting me. So it is a very popular segment. Well, 
We're now walking through a soccer field. That's one thing about the Ice Age Trail, is you never know what environments you're gonna see on trail. A lot of the Ice Age Trail is fields, prairies, roads, there's a lot of roads, and woods, marshland, and apparently soccer fields. But this Verona section actually walks through a few different local parks. So we'll probably be seeing some things that we're not quite used to seeing on trail, but that's part of the Ice Age experience. And there's some kind of a bar. Oh, there, now we're talking. Oh, it's a diner. A diner. Yeah. Pick up yourself some spotted cow, folks. I don't think a, a diner is different than a bar. A diner is like, I'm gonna get a root beer float. You don't get booze at a diner. A diner's like 50s and 60s, like made right, you know, like that kind of thing. All right, let's be clear, folks. They probably don't even have anything deep fried, like cheese curds or anything, because it's a diner. Everywhere in Wisconsin, like 99.9% .9 of places, serve beer and cheese curds. Those are two things that you will come to count on while you're on trail. And if you don't like beer and cheese curds, then you may not want to consider doing the Ice Age Trail. Well, we're on a different section of the bike path now. What is that noise? <gasps> there they are. It's the sand cranes. Can you guys see them? <laughs> Very cool. Here we are at Badger Mill Creek. It's got pretty good flowage. It's listed on gut hooks as being one of the water sources. But you can tell next to this bridge, it's kind of hard to get down to it. You'd have to be going through the grass and you'd have to be really wanting to resupply water. We've still got three liters a piece, so we're gonna skip this one. But this is the last water source for quite a few miles on the trail. I always like carrying a buff on trail. A couple things I use it for, sun protection. Sometimes I'll lay it down the back of my neck. Heat relief, I'll throw some water on it, put it over my neck like a little towel to cool me off. A lot of times I just wear it right on my sternum strap and I use it as something I can wipe my face with because I sweat a lot. You can use it as a mask, that's right. So Wisconsin, a few days ago, put up the order if you're going into a public space like a gas station or a store or something like that, you have to have a mask. So instead of having to carry a mask, you just throw this up and you got a face covering. And of course you can also use it for insulation and warmth and stuff. Although in July, you don't typically need that. But right now I'm just using it for bug protection. It seems to be doing a pretty good job. So every once in a while, when you're on the Ice Age Trail, you'll come across a book nook where you can take a book for your trail journey and then you gotta carry it with you until you find the next book nook. But usually in the trail towns is where you see them. This is the first one I've seen on trail. Through hiking the Ice Age, day 23. Nice segment through here. More miles to go, Constantine. A trail log. Well, I guess we better sign the trail log. There's a pencil in here. meadow sections lots of hot sun we have a nice breeze today so that's really nice we are headed to the prairie moraine park and that is where the verona segment concludes and we're hoping for a bench or maybe a picnic table oh, wouldn't that be great and we're gonna have a little bite to eat 
probably rehydrate and just kind of refuel and rest for a few minutes before we carry on. Well, if you look over here, got a little feeder. It's on private property. At one time, there was something in there to feed. Goats. That's why it's so overgrown. Goats. Now there's just a monkey with a mask on. I'm assuming they probably closed the feeding station because of COVID. Oh, cute. Here we are at the Prairie Marine Park. This is where the Verona segment ends and the 2.9 mile road walk begins. Well, we're stopping for a break. We got the tent fly laid out so that it can dry up. And what's for lunch? We've got Mmm, delicious little baby bells. Reduced sugar fruit snacks. Be health conscious. And raspberry lemonade propel. Mmm. Sarah, what are you eating? Some Cheez-Its. Oh, Cheez-Its. Mm, delicious. All right, back on trail. But we're actually on a connecting route. 2.9 mile connecting route. Between the Verona segment that we just completed. Too much car noise. Holy cow, it's a busy road. What? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're on the 2.9 mile road connector between the Verona segment that we just completed and the Montrose segment which awaits us here. So not too much exciting on the road walk other than full sun and a lot of traffic noise. This is a pretty busy highway. In fact we just saw the cops fly past a few minutes ago. So all right we'll keep you posted when we get to the next segment. All right, point of interest, folks. This is where the old PB turns on a Sunset Drive. And right here at this intersection is Old Duffer's Pub. So if you're looking for a cold drink and something to eat, it's the only thing around, check it out. So we're going to continue on this road here, which is Sunset Drive. A lot less busy. And it looks like there's some elevation. Oh, boy. On the connecting route, we have a llama ranch. Oh, he's laying down. Oh, oh yeah, they, they do lay down on their side. He's gonna go for a little nap. Oh, he's rolling in the dirt. He's taking a dirt bath. Oh, that's hilarious. Hello. Hello. All right, so we've hopped onto the Badger State Trail, which is part of the Ice Age Trail. We share this trail with bikes. There's quite a few bikes, but this marks the beginning of the Montrose segment. Really, there's not too much exciting here. This is a bike path. It's what I like to refer to as a rail trail because at one time it used to be for a railroad and there's a lot of rail trails in the Midwest at least. I don't know about other places in America, but in the Midwest, man, we love our rail trails. So there's not too much exciting, no elevation gain or loss, no big views, just a lot of flat miles on crushed gravel, just like this. I'll check it out. We've got some people making gyros on trail. Never seen anything like this before. Very interesting. Athens Grill, restaurant, bar, and catering. Hmm. Oh, look, they have a big stand up there, too. So I've got my mask on and I'm not really hungry for gyro, but I'm gonna go investigate a cold drink because thirsty as all high heck. 
Uh, my name is Jordan. I'm the lead bartender and the food truck window person here at the Athens Grill. We are at Dots Tavern every Thursday and Friday, 4 to 7, sometimes on Saturdays. That will be determined, and it will always be on the Facebook page for Dots. Excellent. So, through hikers, long distance section hikers, check it out. Absolutely. All right, so let's see what we've got. We've got a cold diet Mountain Dew. And. Mm, they're like going to be hot like that. Come on. Da -da 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 -da. Bar food on trail. What did I tell you about Wisconsin? You can always count on them for some cheese. These are mac and cheese grillers. Oh, yeah. Tasty. <laughs> you know, there's not very much trail magic on the Ice Age Trail. And I wouldn't really call this trail magic, but it is so close. I mean, even if you're selling it to me, the fact that you're putting it on trail, mm, that's pretty magical to me. This is the another parking lot for the Montrose segment. And we just got done this little baby road walk on Pillar Road to get here. Now we had cached some water last night on our way up here. We we hid two gallons. So let's go find out if it's still there. Uh, there's our water cache. Good. Alright. That can, was gonna be kind of a problem. Alright, we can fill up. No shade. no shade. Let's head over to this bench. Maybe there's a little bit, a little oh, tiny spot of shade. Refilling a smart water bottle. Well, we're leaving the humble abode of the little rest stop here. This is the Pillar Road parking lot. And we're hopping back on trail. Even this section of the trail has been pretty busy. There's been a lot of people doing, you know, two, three mile hiking and hike outs. We talked to a few people here. A couple more coming up the trail right now. We have both had to pee for the last seven miles. And there's been so many bikes on trail and so many people and not really any place to get off trail that's not waist high weeds that you know we've just been holding it we're so jealous of you know you guys that can just you know step to the edge of the trail or some other place and just kind of unzip and let it go i tried one of those go girl things one time and honestly i didn't even make it Far enough to even bring it on trail to even try it because I thought I'm gonna have to give this thing a whirl at home so I tried it at home and I I just couldn't I just couldn't do it I mean it, it was so much effort to try to pee standing up as a female that's just so wrong uh, it just feels so weird that I couldn't go and then you have this thingy that you have to you know take out and then it's covered with pee Ugh. and uh you know what are you supposed to do with it then wash it or something um but then you know like how do you wipe because you're, you've got your pants on so i just thought the whole thing was kind of gimmicky i know some women have used it and had a lot of success with it um honestly i'm kind of wishing i had one right now because that's how bad i have to go um but i guess we'll just hold it for a couple more miles so we get off the people-y sections. There's always something on trail that makes you uncomfortable. And uh, right now, that's the number one discomfort. Oh. I don't know about that water source. It's listed on gut hooks, but it looks very questionable. You can see down there, there is 
no flowage. I put a note that said stagnant and gross, just so the next person. I mean, I dr would drink out of some puddles before I would drink out of this. No, I've seen better puddles. <laughs> Ooh. Mm -mm. Uh -uh. All right, so we're in the woods now in the Montrose section and there's a decent amount of elevation here. It's the first time we've had to whip out our trekking poles all day. Oh, yeah, Sarah's not feeling too hot right now. I think she's having a sugar crash. That's why I get diet do avoid that sugar crash. That that is not good on trail. We're making pretty good time. We got a, 14. Yeah, 14 miles in, and we've got like 2.2 miles to go to get to the next DCA. I'm really hoping that that DCA is a good quality DCA where we can stay at. That's where we're planning on staying anyway. And both fully loaded up, four liters of water a piece. So we'll have lots of water to cook tonight, cook tomorrow, and then stay hydrated for today and for the first portion of our hike tomorrow. Yeah. But this is actually a really pretty section. Like look at some of those, look at those rocks over there. You know, this, Walking through all those fields and roads and stuff is worth it when you get to a section like this. Anyway. Oh, wow. Look at that. Glacial features. Anytime the trail gets hard, that's what we say. Glacial features. So, I'm going to pop the camera away for a minute. Because I'm thinking I need two hands on the trekking poles to get through this section. This is a little bit more challenging. I just hit myself in the face my strap. A little bit more challenging than what we've been doing up to this point. So I'll probably catch up with you guys at the DCA. And of course, if I come across anything super majestic or beautiful, I'll make sure to show you. Look how tall this corn is. It's huge. Sarah, go stand next to it. Give us some perspective. Stand next to it. And Sarah's five foot eight. And look at that. Five seven, but I appreciate that. <laughs> oh my gosh, it just towers over you. So you know what this reminds me? You know what this reminds me of? This takes me back to the eighth grade when I decided I was gonna work and the corn to test like team for the summer. Funny story. I detasseled for two weeks and then I was laid off, so they call it. Um, actually, because I'm so short, the corn grew so tall, I was having to jump up to get the, uh, the tassels off of it. And I was breaking too many stalks because of my height. So I was laid off from the corn to tasseling crew. I was never so happy in my life. That was a really crappy job. Oh, hot, gross, and corn rash under your eyes constantly. Whew. I don't miss that. I can't believe you've never seen children of the corn. I never have seen children of the corn. It's scary. It's like based on Stephen King. You know. They like come out from between the rows, you know, so it's creepy. Like growing up, you know, we had like antenna TV and we had like six stations. A couple of them were in French. One was PBS. There wasn't really a lot on TV. So, never really saw a lot of TV growing up. And we weren't big movie people. My Aunt Deb was a big movie person. Sometimes she'd take me to the theater or we'd rent a movie. But I had younger cousins and she would always screen the movie to make sure that it was family appropriate. Except for that one time she let my cousin babysit and uh, she put on uh, Freddy Krueger and <laughs> scared the crap out of all of us. Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, and he comes out of the bedroom with the mom's head and it's just hanging there. Oh my God. I was like six. I'd never seen anything like that. <laughs> oh, so anyway, 
She wasn't allowed to babysit us after that. Well, we got a bench here in the middle of the cornfield. You have fancy arrest and some chiggers biting at your behind because there's quite a bit of grass there. But it's a place to sit nonetheless. Still in the cornfield. That really big cornfield. So it kind of takes me back to when I was a kid. We didn't really have, you know, a lot of forests and stuff around. So it was pretty common. We'd have these two sets of railroad tracks. And sometimes we, my mom and I, we'd pack like a little lunch. And there'd always be these delicious little fruit snacks in the lunch. And we would walk all the way back to the second tracks which I don't think that was far. Maybe it was like a three mile round trip or something. But when you're a little kid, that's pretty far. So we'd walk on this farmer's lane next to the cornfield and there wasn't really any shade to be had. At one time there was a couple trees and of course they got chopped down. They got too old and rotten or chopped down. So we used to just take our little lunch and we would just sit in the corn in between the rows of corn at the end of the field and we'd eat our little lunch and that was a really fun time but that's what this kind of reminds me of I feel like I'm heading out to the second tracks to have a little lunch oh back into the shaded forest <sighs> it's pretty nice and cool here in the forest too so we come out of the forest and we've got this wide open view. Well, we're back in the prairie and we're less than half a mile away from the DCA so I'm really hoping that the DCA is not out in the middle of this prairie. Some of the DCAs on the Ice Age Trail they're not very well maintained. Uh, there could be a lot of overgrowth of grass or brush. Hopefully that's not the case here. But I'm anticipating a bad outcome. But hoping for a good one. Part in the sea. <laughs> Hi, Sam. Well, I think we might be saved. The DCA is down here, just inside the woods. Skirting the line between the woods and the prairie. So usually, in case any of you guys have never done an Ice Age DCA. See that blue blaze that's on the tree right there? All the spur trails that lead to the DCAs are marked in blue. So that way they're easy to find. So then you just follow the blue blazes back to the yellow blazes and you carry on your way. Turn again. Oh, maybe we are going in the woods. Oh, that would be nice. DCA and we got some oh very nice we got some flat ground to set up a tent now this is a DCA quite a few trees if you did have a hammock set up you could oh, look at this what's that through a hiker trail register it's a box no it's chained to the bench Wait. really yeah oh Let's see. How do I get into this magical box? I think there's a, a, a clasp on the front. Uh, uh, it's an ammo box. I don't know how to open an ammo box. Oh. Oh. Yeah, July 25th. Cool. All right, well, let's sign the register. 
Oh, look. Westbound through Hiker Liquor. There's liquor again. 391 down, 745 to go. 34% done. Verona and Motel tomorrow with his little artwork. Oh, delightful. Nice what else is in there? Uh, just a pen. Oh, very cool. Well, Two trail journals today. Let's sign it up. So we've got our camp set up. Got the tent all situated, mats blown up, quilt strapped down, and we're ready for dinner. You hungry, Sarah? Uh, a little, a little, but it's more cheese, so I'm interested. Mmm, cheesy. So what's on the menu tonight? Home style chicken noodle casserole. And Sarah's having... I can't really see it. The package is turned around. That's typical. She's having Forever Young Mac and Cheese. Mm mm mm. Mm mm mm. Chow time. So we are retiring to the tent, so we will see you guys in the morning. Well, good morning, everybody. So the latest thing that I've been into is, um, which I'm not really into, I'm, I've been trying these instant coffee crystals the last few trips because everyone says, oh, instant coffee is the way to go because it's so much lighter. I like my little coffee satchel method, but that does take up a lot of weight. So I've been trying these. These are gross. These are so bad. So I use one of these and then I put a sweetener in there and it's still nasty so what i've been doing is bringing out one of these these breakfast creations or breakfast essentials and i put that in my coffee with the sweetener packet and it makes it a lot more enjoyable but this little thing if you look in the corner what does it say well it's 1.67 ounces for one of these little packets so what i'm wondering is if you guys use instant coffee, what brand do you use? Because the Folgers kind, it, I mean, it's the cheapest thing out there, but it is nasty. So if you guys have a suggestion on an instant coffee that's good, <laughs> leave it in the comments below because um, I'm thinking of maybe going back to the coffee satchel method because it's just so nasty. But I need my caffeine. We're all packed up and we're heading out of here. So we have about a half mile left in the Montreux section. And then we'll be on to the Brooklyn Wildlife segment. All right, so this is the section where it crosses the road and a little house right there. And the trail goes back right there into the woods. But we did cash water here, which I don't think we're gonna need. We still have a couple liters. Where did it get put? Back, by the, one of the trees. back here. Okay. So this is a good spot to cache water. So that way it's about half a mile from that DCA if you need to resupply in the morning. Of course, if you're doing a through hike, you have quite a few less options. There it is. Where? Right there. Oh, yeah. There it is. So we put a gallon there. We're going to leave that there. We don't need it. We're going to pick it up. Pick it up when we're done. All right, we got a nice long boardwalk through some marshy areas. And this portion of the trail is very narrow with some kind of shrubs on each side. There's quite a few more bushy sections in Brooklyn Wildlife. And there's quite a few thorns you have to be careful for. There's a lot of bugs too. 
I've got the buff whipped out. It's not quite bad enough where I need a bug net yet, but they're buzzing around my ears, biting my neck. Just got my buff turned around. I would normally just plow through these with real thorns. Yeah. Yeah, the trail really narrows through this section here. Well, so far, Brooklyn Wildlife has been really uh, not maintained. There are a tremendous amount of thorns on trail. Uh, here's one we have to go around right now. And whole sections that uh, have not been trimmed or anything that you just have to kind of barrel through. Snag in your pack, snag in your clothes. And it's very buggy, very, very buggy. Sarah's gone ahead and just flipped to the bug net. Whoa! <laughs> so, out of the... I literally got a thorn in my ass. Isn't that an expression? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, it, isn't that thorn in your spine? Thorn in your side. In your side? I don't have one in my side. You got a thorn in your butt, though? Thorn in my butt. Sorry, that wasn't very appropriate. What well, seems too nice for this segment. <laughs> This is the buggiest segment I think that we have hiked um, to date, you know, in the you know 120 or so miles we've done on the Ice Age Trail. I think this is the buggiest section. It's the most over, section. overgrown. The problem is it's not just overgrown, it's it's all thorns. We've never seen so many thorns, oh, which rough. makes sense. There's like a lot of berries, more berries than we've ever seen, more thorns. So, I mean, it's fine if it's overgrown, but if it's thorns, you're gonna get some abuse. Yeah, so be prepared. And I mean, I'm taller, and I mean, I have my arms up and the stuff's to my shoulders. So I'm sure it's hitting you in the face. Oh, it's know. awful, yeah. It's awful. So if you're coming to Brooklyn Wildlife, I suggest wearing long sleeves. Like you know, yeah, like yeah, here's the section just, here. There's really overgrown. A lot of it. So yeah, I suggest wearing long sleeves. Definitely would suggest bringing a bug net. I've got one in my pack. I'm thinking, oh my god, I'm tripped up in thorns right now. <laughs> I might throw mine on because they're flying up my nose, in my mouth. All right. Whoa. Okay, the GoPro's got to go away for a minute while we tackle this next section that has a lot of brush. Well, folks, I have succumbed to the need for a bug net. The buff was keeping them off my ears for a while, but they were biting my neck and, uh, I kept swallowing bugs, so I opted for the bug net. Things just got a whole lot nicer. All right, this is the one water source in Brooklyn Wildlife. It's an old pump. some water's coming out now. There we go. Boy. We literally got to pump it quite a few times to get it to go. But yeah, there's some water. It's cold. Is it? It's nice cold and clear. clear. Yeah. Hey, there you go. Boy, that's a workout. Yeah, that's like, that's old school. Back in the day, it's what you had to do. All right, here we are. And to the Brooklyn Wildlife segment. That's our Jeep right over there. Awesome. It's been a great hike, guys. Thanks for joining us up. Now, if you're interested in seeing the next couple of segments that follow this, we hiked those a couple weeks ago. That is the Monticello and the Albany segments. Click on up over on the end screen to go directly to that video. That's going to start up right where we're leaving off here. Now, if you guys haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do so now. We'll see you guys on the next one.